Live from Salt Lake City, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph Goulier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Alright, welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate uh, Final Fantasy podcast. I am Joe. And I am Caleb Schweiss. <laughs> yeah, this isn't the other Caleb that you heard on the commentary, that's for sure. This is the real Caleb, the yeah, official the Caleb one. that should always be here, right? Right. <laughs> Unless you're watching shit when I'm in bed, and then I can't be here. All right, so we have a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, you can find us on ultimafinalfantasy.com. There you'll be able to find our links to our Twitter page or Facebook page or YouTube page. Uh, wherever you want to get us, go to ultimafinalfantasy.com. If you want to contact us, of course, you can use the email there, or you can tweet us at UFF Podcast. Um, so where are you in five right now, Caleb? I am... Just about, well, I've been into the little, what are they, Moogle, Moogle Cave, which, personally, I don't really care for the Moogles. I know there's a lot of people that find them really adorable, mm-hmm. but... <sighs> You're just waiting for the cactars to show up yes, in the Yes, I am. The cactars are the sweetest enemies in the whole series, okay? They are gods. They're so sweet. Yeah, they do so much damage, and they have an awesome little dance. It's perfect. Dude, I like Tom Berry's. Yeah, I think Tom Berries are a good staple for the series. Yeah, they're they're pretty good too. They're better than Moogles. But uh, I'm in the cave where you follow this Moogle in, and there's this T Rex that fucks me over and over again. So I'm pretty much stuck there for right now. What about you? Well, I am. I think I'm just behind you. I think I, I crossed the giant bridge with a whole bunch of enemies, and I had to fight Gilgamesh. Yeah, that's where I'm at. And, and I went Gil- to the town after that, and there was a cutscene. Did you use Gil Toss on Gilgamesh? No, I didn't use Gil Toss. Does a lot. And does it? Yeah. Well, he does a lot, period. It's a really good fucking ability in that game. Uh, I've Samurai. heard he's really good. On, uh, it's really good to use that on the final boss. What I actually heard, uh, even better, if you get the uh, Mime class you can and Bahamut, you can summit Bahamut twice. <laughs> And have everybody else mime the summoning of Bahamut twice, and you'll kill the final boss, apparently. Nice. In just one go. That's pretty cheap. But Yeah, uh, that's pretty cheap, but I heard about it, and uh, I'm going to have to go get the the mime, abil- uh, the mime class in Bahamut. All right, well, you can do that, and I'm just going to throw money at him <laughs> like a good capitalist <laughs> and dominate him. Because it does more the more level, the higher your level is, and also the more gil you have. And in the final areas of these games, we all know how much money you pull out. That's true, It's yeah. ridiculous. It's always so. like you make twice as much money in the last like couple hours of the game than you did the entire rest of the fucking yeah. game. <laughs> and it's brutal because you're like, wow, I... Well, I, I, I was I was hoping for money this entire time, and now yeah, I now have it, useless. and it's a waste of time. Yeah, I love earning like like twenty thousand gil on like enemies in the final areas, and it's it's for naught. There's no stores. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can't even go back. Like in Final Fantasy, I think was it three and two? Like you couldn't go back. Like after that that huge era you know and you were making so much bank well in three you could it, it just takes a long time to That's, get it. you'd have to go throughout the entire dungeon well, see, and then go out of the ancient yeah well what sucks uh, is uh maze. if you go into the ancient maze and then use exit it'll take you right back out in between the ancient maze and the crystal tower so I was just like, all right, fuck it. I don't want to go back. Yeah, it's annoying. I'm just going to finish this. It, it, there's a maze in between the maze. It's so stupid. Yeah, So and the exit spell like chooses to It's stupid the... that the enemies around there give you gill. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird if you think about it. Of course, enemies... it is a good place to farm gill, I guess, if yeah. you are willing to go back. Yeah. It's... Which I, I did go back out of there once, I think. Yeah, because I wanted to level up through the Leviathan shit. Because I went and got Leviathan and uh, oh shoot, the other uh, summon guy. I went and got Odin. Odin, I think. Oh, I couldn't take Odin when I found him. You he, couldn't get you took an, in three. Yeah, I killed every. I laid waste everything in there, but Odin, I just could not beat. So yeah, I, I got. I I did the extra stuff in three. I didn't. Um, we we didn't. We never talked about this, but in Final Fantasy three. On the DS, there were 
there was this mail system, right? And most of the extra quests had to do with the deliveries of the mail through the Moogle. You remember that? Yeah, they would mention shit. And uh, my the DS that I had borrowed from my friend with the game would not hook up to my wireless internet, so I couldn't I couldn't do the extra quests, which is something um, I think you can only do that shit on the DS if certain like things let you do that you have to have friends that you will send letters to and shit like that and so i think it's kind of like i think it's really stupid that square did that well it's like it was you really... can only get the onion knight class if you send like seven letters and blah 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 yeah. But you have to have internet, and you have to have this. It's well, just and also dumb. the DS, the I'd servers. like to be able to just do that in the game. Yeah, and there have to be people playing it when you play it five years, six years later. Yeah, but I got to tell you, tough. I got to tell you, I was complaining about the job classes in Final Fantasy III, and I was dreading Final Fantasy V because it was going to be the job classes again. Right. But uh, Final Fantasy V's job classes are, first of all, way better. Yeah. And second of all, they don't have that thing where you have to wait 10 battles before they can be, you know, fully equipped. Yeah, which is interesting because the original version of 3 did not have that. Like, it, it was it just... didn't an, have that? No. Oh. Caleb and I were talking about this a couple days ago. It, You just ch- changed jobs. That was it. And that's beautiful. That's like a big chunk of the issues I had with 3. It was yeah. like, fuck, Angus is an idiot. You know, it takes like 40 <laughs> turns for this guy to learn this shit. <laughs> I remember I was complaining uh, to Caleb. I was like, it takes 12 turns. It takes 12 turns. And apparently the max turns is 10. And then he like freaked out on me. He's like, it doesn't take 12. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well, it feels like it. If it's not 12, it's a two digit number. It is 10. It is 10. <laughs> it is 10 uh, random boss or uh, random, random fights. And uh, it takes forever to get into 10 fights in Final Fantasy 3 on the DS. Really, it it takes forever. Yeah, it does. <sighs> All right. So besides that, we do have some uh, some news concerning our podcast, right, Caleb? Do we? Oh, we do. It's actually called uh, the UFF Podcast. Back to school spectacular. It's going to be f- how many episodes a week, Caleb? Five. It's going to be five episodes a week, not full episodes. We'll have the full episodes on Wednesday. But five uh, episodes a week for you guys to sink your teeth into before you have to go back to school or, you know, whatever you whatever you do <laughs> or if you're, at the end of August. Or if you're like me and you're in sales and you just start losing money every week, you got more shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, just to let you guys know, we will be having... Uh, on Monday is going to be our Did You Know show. Um, uh, right now we have planned, and th- these are subject to change uh, depending on uh, what we feel is best here. Um, we have Mythic and Literature Origins of Final Fantasy VII next week on Monday. And then we have um, Mythic and uh, Literature Origins of the Four Fiends is going to be another episode. Uh, the connection between Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X, which is something I wanted to do an episode on for a while now, but I wanted to wait till later on in the podcast, but I figured now's a good time. Yeah. Um, and the origins, of course, of the summons. So that's going to be our Did You Know. That's our our plan for our Monday Did You Knows. Um, then we have Tactical Tuesdays. Uh, our first episode is going to be How to Get Knights of the Round in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, which I have It's going to be a mini walkthrough of that stuff. Yeah, mini because it takes a while. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're going to have an FAQ on the final hunt of FF12. What's that guy called? Yizamat. Yizamat. He's got like... What was it, like 8 million hit points or some shit yep. like that? It's disgusting. And our third episode is how to get Lionheart in uh, FF8, which is, of course, Squall's ultimate weapon. And uh, of course. we have planned for our fourth uh, Tuesday of August um, the weapons in Final Fantasy VII. Strategy on beating the weapons. Right. Which Caleb is in charge of, but he actually has to beat them first. Yeah, it's... <laughs> If you guys haven't tried Emerald and Ruby, they are insane. <laughs> Emerald, not so bad. I mean, he gets pretty rough near the end, and I start running out of uh, All, which is the spell that you link to Cure and stuff, and that way you full life your entire team. 
after a few casts, even the mastered ones, you can only use, I can't even remember how many, it might be like five or six times, and then it only casts it on one guy. And they start doing massive amounts of damage, so I think I've got a pretty good idea on how to beat them, and I'm going to share that with you guys once I beat them. Okay. So. So assuming that you beat him by the fourth week, if you don't, yeah. we'll have another episode and uh, we'll we'll do that one later. Oh, they'll and be and there dead. should be, and I'm gonna try to edit videos at least to these Tactical Tuesday ones. There should be videos on YouTube. I'm gonna edit together um, that'll support um, what we're talking about, of course. Um, then we'll have our regular episodes on Wednesday. Um, this week, of course, is uh, Yoshitaki Amano. Next week should be Final Fantasy V. We might have to move some stuff around, though, if we don't beat it, because we're both about halfway yeah. in the game. Um, then we have, we're going to have a character battle episode, Cecil versus Bartz, and then we're going to have our review of the Final Fantasy V sequel movie. Yeah. So that'll be fun. And then on Thursday is going to be our Thursday commentary, in which we'll talk about... Uh, Final Fantasy uh, Unlimited. Unlimited. That's Final right. Fantasy Unlimited. We're going to continue our, our commentaries there. Uh, episode 2, 3, 4, and 5, of course. And then uh, Fan Fiction Friday, which will continue our uh, super sexy swing in fan fiction. So you guys stay tuned for that kind of stuff. I'm not going to make this announcement again because this announcement's really long. But uh, yeah, so month of August, make sure you guys are downloading some uh, Final Fantasy shit. It's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, we got a lot of content we've got ready for you guys, so enjoy it. All right, man. Let's get to news. 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 All right. So first up in news, Tokyo has a new Final Fantasy Cafe. Uh, Final Fantasy 14. 14, right. <laughs> if only it were for all of them. But uh, That would be so sweet. I know. I know. So from the article that we've found, uh, it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks looks fucking great. It's called the Eorzea Cafe, and it's this really like classy place with like plays to places to play the game and uh, shit like that. It's cool. Yeah. yeah, the only downside I see is the Moogles everywhere, but uh, they're <laughs> beloved. So you know, there's like swords and like arrow shit on the walls. Man, it looks sweet. And the, uh, it looks like it has burgers. So yeah, and good. the burgers, or at least those little wing things, have little swords that you pull them out with. <laughs> so I hope to God the burgers have little mini swords in them to hold them together. Anyway, we found this at uh, Kotaku.com, K-O-T-A-K-U.com. I'm sure you can do a Final Fantasy fourteen search in there. And they think it's beautiful, too. Yeah. Which is the name of the article. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's cool. Let's see when is it its grand opening? July 31st. Oh, so it opens tomorrow. Yeah. We got to get uh That is cool. Get on a plane. Yeah, we're just going to get on a plane and yeah. go there. Be like, "We are I'm sure uh, someone will. Someone in the US will." Yeah. There's got to be a big 14 fan. That'd be out there. sweet if we went out there and we're like told them who we were and they just like traded us like we're some awesome podcast. <laughs> like, "Oh, the ultimate oh, Final Fantasy. We are the smallest Final Fantasy podcast." <laughs> You know us, right? <laughs> of course. Of course they would. <laughs> All right. Um, so el- other things in news. This isn't really news for Final Fantasy, but uh, Tetsuya Nomura is, of course, at Comic-Con. He's signing shit. And uh, I'm, I don't know. Is Comic-Con still going? I, I don't know. I have no idea. It goes on we're not, like we're not in California, so we're, we have our own Comic-Con in Salt Lake, so we just don't care about any other Comic-Con. But... Um, Tetsuya Nomura, of course, signing autographs at, at Comic-Con, and he apparently did this uh, redesign of Batman, and uh, he, you can have him sign the redesign of Batman. If you haven't seen the Batman that he did, that he designed, um, go check it out. It's very interesting, if anything. Yeah, it's it's sweet and then a little bit intense. It looks like a, looks like a Transformer or a Gundam and, and Batman. It kind of does look like a Gundam with the helmet thing. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, we also have um, the tech director for the Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Yos- okay, I'm gonna slaughter this name. Yoshihisa Hashimoto. Yos- Yoshihisa ha- Hashimoto. Fuck. Can't fucking say it. <laughs> All right. So this guy, um, he left Square Enix for personal reasons, and that's really all the uh, news that we have. 
Um, he was the CTO for the company, and he oversaw the uh, the game engines uh, that Final Fantasy, of course, um, or that Square, of course, created for the Final Fantasy games. And uh, he's a big deal, and he just he just left for personal reasons. So, man, they're hemorrhaging yeah. employees. <laughs> they don't have very many, but uh, they're. Uh. A lot of them leaving. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, we got to address the Final Fantasy 15 rumors that have been just fucking everywhere this week. Yeah. Um, there was apparently a PC release date spotted on a leaked uh, Steam database entry. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people thinking that this is Square saying that they were going to have a Final Fantasy 15 release on the PC. And... Uh, as much as we'd want that, there is no official thing on the PC. There's no there's no confirmed version um, for Final Fantasy 15 on the PC whatsoever. So I don't think anybody should take this uh, to heart as a fact until you know more information. Yeah, I would really love that because I really don't want to buy a next gen. I know I'm kind of a stickler for not, but I, I like to hold out as long as I can with the old PS3. Yeah. Yeah, and... PC is just beautiful for me. Yeah, the PC. I I I think I would get it on the PC. I'm not sure yeah. if my PC could handle it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd have to change that. Yeah. So that's about it for news. All right. We ready to go on to our discussion for today? I think we are. All right. This week we're going to be talking about Yoshitaki Amano. Yoshitaka Amano. Excuse me. Okay, everybody. I want you to do a Google image search for any Final Fantasy character. Any? Any Final Fantasy character, man. And more likely than not, you will find the original artwork done by a man named Yoshitaki Amano. Uh, Most of the art for the earlier games, as well as the logo designs for most of the series, save Final Fantasy IX, uh, were done by this one man, whose artistic influence has been the basis for the look of the entire series. Um, Amano was born in 1962 in 1952. 52 in Shizoku, Japan. <laughs> uh, like many artists, he was fascinated with drawing at a young age when he was about 15. In 67, not whatever, uh, he began <laughs> working in the animation department of Tatsunoko Productions. His first project there was on the early anime Speed Racer, and he continued working there. Uh, for productions such as Gotcha Man, Tekka Man, Honey Bee Hutch, and Time Boken. Have you heard of any of those before? I have not heard of any of those before. I, I'm sure there are some anime honey, lovers who've heard of those. Honey Bee Hutch rings a bell, but I mean, as we've discussed, we're, neither of us are real anime lovers, so... Yeah, sorry about know. that. All right, so it was during this period that Amano was introduced to both uh, Japanese animation movement... Um, to both the Japanese animation movement as well as Western comic book art, uh, in which he was most fascinated by the uh, psychedelic artwork of Peter Max and the cover art of Neil Adams, whose cover work includes those of Batman, the Green Lantern, the Green Lantern, and uh, Ben Casey. He stated, "When I was a teenager, I was really interested in American comics, but there wasn't much available in Japan at the time. In this section of Tokyo, uh, where there were where there." are lots of used bookstores there was one shop that had a box of comics for sale and i would just wade through them they were like 10 cents each when i'd find one that i liked i'd think score amano was also interested in the in a french art movement called art nouveau as well as japanese block art and really guys if you look up Art Nouveau, which is N-O-U-V-E-A-U, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, definitely. Um, You see this very flowing kind of nature-like work, and if you, like, look at Amano's stuff and at that art movement, um, you you see the influence there, definitely. Um, As we can see, though, like, he was interested in Japanese block art, comic books, Art Nouveau, of course... 
Um, it's a truly diverse palette that influenced Amano's very unique work. Uh, yeah, it's he's you can like you said about the uh, the flowing art in the art books for the first five or six games. It is very beautiful. It's really good art. It's not what we're used to necessarily in modern Final Fantasies, but no, definitely it not. looks really good. So uh, Tatsunoko Productions was his employer until 1982 when he started focusing more on science fiction and fantasy projects. And he became a freelance artist where he began to make a name for himself in the Japanese comic book industry, commonly referred to as m- manga. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be like, it's manga. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> In this realm, he did illustrations for a series called Kimari, Kimaira and Demon City Shinjuku. Uh, his most famous work, of course, was Vampire Hunter D, which I have heard of and I've watched a little bit of, which he worked on both the graphic novels as well as character design for the full-length movie, uh, which he said he wasn't very happy with. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll have to do a review on it. Uh, I know what you're all thinking. Uh, when does he start to work on Final Fantasy? The answer, 1987, the year he joined Square. Yeah, obviously, before the Final Fantasy game came out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the lead designers for Final Fantasy I, uh, Koichi Ishii, uh, was a fan of Imano, Amano's work and was the person who suggested to Hironobu Sakaguchi to hire Amano to design the look of the game. Initially, due to the fact that Sakaguchi hadn't heard of Amano, uh, he turned the suggestion down. But his mind, but he changed his mind when Ishii showed him the artist's work in a magazine. Well, from what we can find, uh, Yoshitaki Amano was the sole artist for the first game. And, you know, even though the games on the original NES graphics may seem like nothing to fawn over, Amano's conceptual designs for characters such as Sarah and Chaos are incredibly beautiful, featuring a flowing design quality that we've talked about that is very unique. Uh, One could describe his work as messy yet precise and full of emotion. Uh, During production for the second Final Fantasy... The art staff was increased to three people, including graphic designers Kazuko Shibuya and Ryoko Tanaka, although Amano would stay as the lead character designer and logo artist, of course. Uh, Amano, according to the game's credits, uh, and we're not sure if this is 100% accurate, uh, because they had artists and then they got rid of them, that's what it looks like, according to the the credits of these games, uh, would go solo once again with Final Fantasy III. Um, and although we doubt this is likely, but this is what the credits say, Final Fantasy IV also. Um, it was Final Fantasy IV that really allowed Amano to open up and give the characters more elaborate designs, uh, as the increased, uh, capacity, uh, capacity for the Super NES allowed for it. Amano would once again be lead artist on the Final Fantasy V, and would lead would be the lead artist on final fantasy five god <laughs> and would lead for a final time with number six um from final fantasy four to final fantasy six more and more graphic designers were added to the staff uh including another famed designer tetsuo nomura which of course we talked about in the news uh but when final fantasy went from 2d to 3d amano went on to do more freelance work and took a back seat on the development of the Final Fantasy series. This is where Tetsuo Nomura came in and took Amano's position as lead designer on Final Fantasy VII. Amano apparently was too busy opening galleries in New York and Paris to work on the greatest game in the entire series. <laughs> well, you know, I've heard a few things about this. These aren't really like official statements or anything. This is what... You know, I found that seemed like the most official thing was that he was too busy and he decided that he didn't want to work on 7. Um, he, he wanted to kind of take a back seat. Apparently he did work on a few designs, like uh, apparently like um, like designs of certain areas he had worked on on, on 7, but uh, he wasn't the character designer. Um, even though you can find his designs for Cloud and stuff like that. Um, but I think what I had heard, and this isn't official is that they actually chose uh, Tetsuya Nomura because of Tetsuya Nomura's more anime style of of art. And 
is more three D kind of art, so that when they did the three D game, like right. it'd be easier to like you know go to from one to the it. other. Yeah, to yeah. transfer it. So I that's what I had heard before is that that's why they went with Nomura instead of Amano. I mean personally, uh. I don't know. I prefer Amano's artwork to to Nomura's. Not that Nomura's is bad <laughs> whatsoever, but uh, I think I don't know. Amano's stuff is just always beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Yeah, so. I think I would like Amano more if he were the artist now. Now that we could actually see more of his influence as opposed to just in the artwork book where the graphics were too crappy to well, handle. Well, his, his influence, though, is still in the game. It is. I mean, especially in the battle stuff when, like, it's all expanded and shit like that when you can actually see what's going on in the right. game. Right. That's, that's from, like, 7 to 9. But after 10, it all looks just fantastic. So, yeah. I mean, that's the issue I run into with trying to pick a favorite one is 10 and 12 look awesome. But then the artwork in the earlier ones looks really good. So... I don't know. I think it'd be sweet if he would have stayed with them. Oh, uh, he still is with the company. He's a freelance artist. Well, now. you know what I mean. But if he would have been the, he's only doing the logos mostly. <laughs> yeah, which would be a really cush job. I mean, he did. <laughs> uh, when one looks at the main Final Fantasy series as a whole, uh, one sees a split in the look of the Final Fantasy series that occurs when Final Fantasy goes from two dimensions, uh, from a two dimensional experience to a three D one. The automatic assumption is that the difference we see is simply a change in dimension, but I think there's something more than that. Uh, Yoshitaki Amano was the lead designer for the series from FF1 to FF6, of course, and the reason why the games feel so coherent and closely related has mostly to do with that fact, I believe, not just because they're in 3D. Uh, although he did work on some character designs later, uh, later those of uh, Final Fantasy IX, of course, which is, of course, the, the Final Fantasy that like goes back and uh, tries to feel like the older games. Uh, Amano is mostly seen as the go-to guy for Final Fantasy logos, which we've, right. of course, talked about. Uh, he also continues to be a big name in illustration alone, uh, working on such projects as Oniomi and... Electra and Wolverine. Yeah, Electra and Wolverine. And a new version of Kimba the White Lion, which I have no idea what that is, opening up at art exhibits such as 2010's Devaloka Exhibit Tour. Okay. Uh, and although throughout his uh, still-going career, he has won... The Saiyan Award uh, five times, as well as a Bram Stoker Award for his work on Vampire Hunter D. Bram Stoker. Sorry, Bram Stoker. <laughs> Bram Stoker. Bram Stoker. <laughs> <laughs> Bram would enjoy that. You know, uh, yeah, definitely. If if you guys don't know who Amano is, and you just you're just only familiar with the older games, um, just look up Princess Sarah from Final Fantasy One, and you'll see a very beautiful. Uh, like, I'm not sure if it's a painting or a drawing. It's just gorgeous, though. Yeah, it's really of, nice. Uh, of Sarah, anything from any of the artwork, six yeah, and below. Pick up a pick up a PlayStation copy of any of the games, and as long as the booklet's in there, which it should be, because you should always have the booklet, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to see some really good artwork, and it's it's nice. Like I, I I'm always amazed when I go in there and I look at that, and I'm like, damn. If only that could be how the game looks. It would just be <laughs> so sweet looking. Oh. Not that that takes away from the game's overall awesomeness necessarily, but it would just be interesting to see how this man's art would have looked in a seven format. Yeah, if if you see, yeah, yeah, the I, backgrounds I can see six, what you're saying. Yeah. Um. Once again, six has better graphics than oh, yeah. the, than five or six four. Six looks good. Yeah, six <laughs> looks like. Is about as good as the uh, Super NES games can look. Yeah, um, and w- we'll of course get to that after Final Fantasy V, which doesn't look as good as four, I even think. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Something about the color palette of Final Fantasy V just looks weird. Yeah, it's different for sure. Yeah, but um, no, I think most more of his influence is in, is in Final Fantasy VI. I think you can see that a lot better. Yeah. Um, just. Because it, I don't know, maybe a bigger production staff of more artists makes it uh, makes it easier to to transfer that stuff. But who knows? I I honestly don't know. Yeah. Um. But I I see what you're saying. But if you look at the remakes of the games, they're still going off of Amano's artwork. So if you like played down a Souls or something like that, there's a lot more detail in the in the in the game and you can see more of the influence. You can also see more of the influence of anime artists that are obviously behind the remakes. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, I I didn't play the Dawn of Souls, so I'll have to look at that. Yeah. So uh, you know, I I love the remakes of the two D Final Fantasies, except for of course when they put it into three D. I'm not really a fan of those so much. Like three. Yeah, like three and like four. I thought I tried to watch some of the stuff in four, like the voice acting. It was just weird. Yeah. I couldn't. I didn't like it, and th- that's why I'm not too happy. I'm not too excited about a Final Fantasy VII like full revamp. I'm not too excited for. Yeah, I'd rather the, just have a graphical update like the Final Fantasy IV complete. You yeah, know? that you played. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, it looks really good. And that's what they should do with Seven. Is just make it look good. Yeah, because I mean the issue is the game came out in '97, and if it came out now, Japanese culture is totally different, so it's going to have a different kind of a feel. And it had the feel of '97, and it should have the feel of '97. Right. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to do a correction on something. That's right, the Aerith thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I we had a comment on our blog on uh, why he thought that me saying it was Eris instead of Aerith was wrong, and he was right. Yeah. Um, it is supposed to... Uh, her name is Aerith uh, because apparently it's supposed to sound like the word Earth. In in Japanese, it's supposed to be uh, what's the word for that? When one word sounds like another for uh, homonym, uh, something close to that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's supposed to be like symbolic in that way instead of like I always thought it was like Aries, like the constellation. Yeah, and like the the reason I I don't know something to support that. It's not the reason I thought that uh, was that. The first shot of Final Fantasy VII is the stars, and then it fades into Aries' face. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so, I don't and I'm still going to call her Eris because I'm I'm used to Final Fantasy 7, which her name is Eris. Yeah. Um and so, you know, that's that's what I always thought and I thought there was some you know, some kind of stim- symbolism there like and there's always stuff about aliens and shit like that in the game, so it made sense to me. Um but no, her name is is Aerith uh, because it's supposed to sound like the the word earth and uh it's symbolic in that way so i just want to apologize for going off my rant and being completely wrong last yeah last time we talked about this (laughs) oh man all right well well this is kind of a short episode but uh we only have so much space on our lips and account anyway right now (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah the uh the last what was it the oh yeah it was final fantasy 4 the that was a pretty big it's episode. The two hour, two hour episode. Yeah, like in these, I was thinking been... about splitting it into two just for the downloads. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think some of these later ones we might have to because of how big they are. Like it's gonna be seven is gonna be a long ass episode. Yeah, if we I'm do thinking one about with the with the Final Fantasies that are on discs. We could just get to the end of certain discs and talk about it. Um, that's what other podcasts do. Well, the issue when they when they review like other games they often will split the games well the issue with that is disc two of seven is like three hours long <laughs> it's like disc one 80 percent of the game disc two 15 percent right. disc three yeah. final you can fight actually get through midgar right at the beginning pretty quickly yeah and that's the biggest chunk of course that's the part of the game when you're like figuring it out too. yeah well it's crazy when we did the we did a speed run a while back i think we've mentioned this yes and i got like to the world map really fucking fast compared to the first couple times I played the game and I was like god I feel like I'm almost done yeah. you know so yeah very short the Final beginning. Fantasy 8 and Final Fantasy 9 are a little bit more even the last discs on all of them are very short yeah very very short um yeah 7 is just the crater and then 8 is just the castle and then 9 I think is just the one place in in the the freaking crazy area. I can't yeah, remember where it yeah. Is. I saw I saw Cody, one of our other buddies, beat nine. He was like really bitching about. it. He's like, God, I can't beat this game. And then he put it in and beat it. And I'm sitting next to him. I'm like, yeah, oh, that looked easy, dude. I beat the final <laughs> boss of Final Fantasy Nine with my white mage. Was the only person left in my party. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you do basic attack? Yeah, and then she would just heal herself. The reason why I could beat him with that person, I think she was like the only one who couldn't be affected by status effects. Oh. I played nine like a retard. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I would just keep healing myself and then attack a little bit. And I killed her. Yeah. Or I killed it. Um, it was it was pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about these games. The further we get into them, like, I, I'm not running into any problems like I was in FF1. 
now I'll get brutalized by enemies that are meant to be brutal as fuck, but like the party set up, it's a breeze now. And yeah, the there's no Final Fantasy V I haven't had too big a problem with. Yeah, the T Rex thing is the only thing that I've been like, holy fuck. That and the flame guy, but that's because I only had Ice One. It's and then I saw two, Yeah, I saw dude. Joe go through there with Ice Two and it did like twice as much damage and I was like, Oh God, that would have been sweet. <laughs> 700 damage on a guy with 3,000 HP. Yeah. yeah, and I had to fight the guy, and I had to make him run out of mana before I could kill this fucking dude. <laughs> like, he he was out, and I was, like, barely alive. His basic attacks were still hitting me. I had the black mage left, and that was it. And then I killed the little bastard. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, it was, it was a chore. Yeah, we should be done with five by next week um, if we put the pedal to the metal. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to start playing it as soon as we're done with this fucking podcast. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to play five, and uh, you guys are going to have a good week. Yeah, enjoy um, it. Make sure you check us out on ultimafinalfantasy.com. Once again, you can find all of our links to our Twitter, our Facebook, and our YouTube channels. And some awesome walkthroughs on a couple of the games. And or- some great places to subscribe. Make sure if you're listening to us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbay FM, I don't give a shit where you get your podcast from. Just make sure you hit subscribe so that you can listen to every single one of our episodes. And make sure you talk to us on Twitter, talk to us on our blog, uh, just so that we're uh, we're all part of a big conversation. I yeah. really wanna I really wanna talk to you guys a little bit more. Uh, we had some we had some comments last week to do more fan fiction, and we're gonna be doing that next month. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. There's gonna be four <laughs> fan fictions yeah. uh, for each Friday, and then. Uh, and so, you know, guys, make sure you leave iTunes reviews. We'll, uh, of course, uh, read the iTunes reviews on the show. Um, uh, just to let you know, that it does take 48 hours for an iTunes review to pop up. So don't do it like the day before the show. Yeah, don't feel sad if yeah. we didn't post it. We will say it even if you guys trash the shit out of yeah, us. Yeah, that's so. true. We'll, we'll read whatever you guys put. We'll, we'll give you shit, but we'll, we'll take it like yeah. men. Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, uh, before we go, with that... I like how we say we'll take it like men, but last time we had a a, a (laughs) four-star review, we were like, bitches. Fuck that. (laughs) No, I mean, just because of that, I'm going to go off after we beat all these games in like 10 years from now. uh, I'm going to go off and I'm going to do just games, just total video game podcast on whatever game I happen to be playing and be like, this is my knowledge. (laughs) <laughs> see how fast it is <laughs> oh uh with the fan fiction is that the only series that Konzen has done I doubt it Okay, I, I could ask him for more he does email me back I he is really nice about it believe it or weird, not yeah. so <laughs> I think maybe we should uh, follow Konzen for a little while if we do follow Konzen once you know, he finishes up once again guys I'm not. I'm not gonna say we will probably follow Konzen if no one gives us fan fiction to read. Yeah, and um, if, well, unless of course you're disgusted by the fan fiction. And yeah, then... that's true. We can do a uh, cleaner fan fiction. Uh, certainly, the first person who posts fan fiction on this fucking show <laughs> in our contact list, you could just put a link to your fan fiction, whatever, will get read. I yeah. can guarantee it. Yeah, we we don't like searching for it necessarily. No. <laughs> so make sure you go to our contact page on our website. Just put in general inquiry and uh, give us a link to a to a good fan fiction, uh, and we'll 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 read it at least uh, a month from now, probably yeah. probably the episode after Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, and we I'm sure it's going to be more readable. Yeah. I mean, it can't not be right. Right. I sure. <laughs> If there's anyone that looks at publishing material on their website, you know what? it should be better. Uh, you know, this this reminds me of something. I know we're dragging this episode along like no other f- motherfucker, but uh, I, there needs to be novelizations of the Final Fantasy games here in the United States. I know there is a novelization of Final Fantasy II in Japan, and there's, of course, uh, comic book uh, sequels to the to the to the games over there. There are radio shows to the games over there. Um, there's like a third Final Fantasy X that's just in like, there's like a half novel form and then half uh, like a radio show version. Really? Yeah. I don't know why they don't bring that over here. I don't know. There's like a million Halo novels and a million Diablo novels. Oh, God, And yeah. Final Fantasy so- has sold more than those over here. Oh, yeah. So why don't we have some Final Fantasy like books? Why can't we get like Terry Gilliam to, not Terry Gilliam. 
fucking what's his name terry goodkind or whatever oh yeah terry goodkind yeah why, why can't we get him to do a novelization of uh the final fantasy games or even whoever did them over there just get a good translation team yeah. together i mean we eat this shit up over here i That's mean true. all of it certainly so. i would yeah and i the reason i think of that is is because i remember playing a f- or i remember looking at a final fantasy 8 guide like years ago yeah. and the guy had like <laughs> novelized like a fourth of the game Really? Like he had a link to his like thing, and I just thought it was it was not well written, but <laughs> I just thought it was like, oh, this is kind of what I want. Yeah. At the time, I'm not sure if I would read them now. But <laughs> certainly, there are people who who want those. Yeah, and I mean, if it's events that happened before, and there are a million people who want a fucking Final Fantasy VIII movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know about that, but uh, fuck Advent Children. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, now, you don't know if the eight movie would be an Advent Children esque movie or not i don't know why it would be no one knows joe it just happens that way <laughs> eight is a much i wouldn't say more lighthearted, but it has a different feel to it definitely well it has kind of more of an emotional feel than seven yeah that's true and it's not s- as dark and uh, in some ways it's more dark though like, well with the actual lighting and coloring of the game it is but the actual the the feel of it i don't know if it's as dark no, I, no, I, don't think I think it is. the feel of seven is much darker with all the killing and shit. Yeah, yeah. there's blood. <laughs> there is blood, <laughs> but there is no blood when Aerith gets. I think Final Fantasy VIII through. has. It's less pessimistic of a story, and the characters are also not pessimistic. Seven, there's a lot of negativity in that game. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's a. I'm not. I'm not saying whatever's good or whatever's bad. I think Final Fantasy VII story is much better than eight. Yeah. Um, but the feel of the game is more lighthearted in eight for the first like half, and then the second half when shit starts going down, it becomes this mysterious kind of ghostly horror thing. Yeah. Um, and that's anyway that's the that's the feel I get from the game. Yeah, it's you like Parasite Eve. It's all fucked up and scares you a little bit when Genova comes out and she's this deformed freak. Well, mostly I'm thinking the thing that defines Final Fantasy VIII that like goes from like, oh, it's this lighthearted, but it's kind of a soldier adventure, but no one gets killed. It's kind of like a '90s action movie um, with a little bit of comedy put in, you know. And then like. As soon as Renoa gets taken over by Adele and there's this like ghostly Renoa walking through the spaceship, I think shit just gets weird. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really scary. I don't remember. And then like every time you go and touch Renoa, you like get flown you get like you your character just gets shot back by like twenty feet. It's 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 a cool part and yeah. it's freaky, yeah. And then there's this part where you're like going through time at the end of disc three and like like you see all the sorceress through the ages and you have to fight them all and like time's getting all squampus and like, oh yeah yeah i've seen that it's scene. it's crazy it looks cool yeah it's it's cool so you know final fantasy 8 not dark at all for the first half even though there's war in it which is a problem with final fantasy 8 is that they don't treat the war very like realistically seriously. yeah it's like a side thing. um but when the sorceress stuff goes down it goes down and it's, yeah it's it's a it's a different feel for the game, and I really enjoy it. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Is that? Am I right? Yeah, I don't think we have anything else to really talk about. That's stuff we should save for later is yeah. what we have to talk about. So Yoshitaki Amano, go check him out, guys. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a great artist for Final Fantasy. I would agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>